Begin with a deep breath in through your nose. Filling your lungs slowly, slowly. The slower you breathe, the more your lungs can fill. And when you reach the top, hold it there. Your lungs totally full. Just a couple seconds, then let them empty naturally, allowing them to deflate on their own until they reach that equilibrium where they stop. And then breathe the rest of the air out yourself. Fully emptying your lungs. We'll do one more like that. And as you settle into your next breath, slowly filling your lungs through your nose once again, I invite you to use the motion of your lungs filling as a guide for scanning your body. As your lungs slowly fill, move your attention from your toes up through your feet up through your ankles and calves and knees. Checking in with your body, seeing how it's feeling today. Checking to see what feels creaky, what feels strong. Our body sends us signals all the time and it's a language that we can learn to understand the more we tune in. Another breath like that, after breathing out, emptying your lungs completely. Continue scanning your body up through your lower abdomen, through your chest and shoulders, your neck, your arms. What are you feeling? What is your body communicating with you today about what it needs? about what you need. As you sync up with your body, moving into relationship with it after having spent a night of it sleeping and your mind dreaming, I invite you to notice the miraculous nature of that relationship. How we go from unconscious, our body taking care of itself, breathing, the heart beating, processing all of the inputs it got the previous day through our kidneys and liver, our stomach, our brain processing the informational input from the previous day. While we ourselves are unconscious, do we disappear? Where do we go? The ancients believed that our soul left our body each night, allowing the body to process its work while our soul ventured home, spending the evening in the higher realm. And that each morning to them, it was a miracle when they were reunited with their body. And they would say, Modani lefanecha melechai v'kayam, shechazarta bi nishmati v'chemla, Rabbi Amunatecha. I'm grateful before you 
ever living sovereign of the universe, that you have returned my breath soul to me in mercy and in your great faith in me. The last piece there, the idea that our soul is returned to us, our breath is returned to our conscious mind is an act of faith in us. Begins our day with purpose. If you were to imagine yourself living in a world in which you fully believed that each day your soul was returned to you, and each day that soul was given a new purpose for that day, what purpose are you feeling today? So we breathe in deeply once again through our noses, filling our lungs. What messages is your body communicating to you about your purpose today? How is it reminding you of your rootedness in this world? In what ways is your body communicating what it learned through the night to your conscious mind? In what way is your soul, your soul breath communicating to your body what it needs for the day? Lo hai neshama shenatata bi tehorahi atavrata daitarta tanafakta bi vata neshamra bekir bi calls manche neshama bekir bi modani lefanecha adonai Hello, hi, hello, hey, I will tie the motai. Reborn, call hama sing. I don't call her shamot. Baruch atadonai. Asher be yadil. Nefesh kochai. Veruach. Creator of all, creator of me, has placed within me this soul breath this day, has brought me a pure message, has created it and formed it and shaped it to my need for this day, and looks over me. The whole time that this breath is within me, it's within you today, we experience the gratitude and the acknowledgement of the God creator of all, creator of the universe, creator of our parents and our parents' parents that provides us with the deeds we need to do every day and gives us the breath we need to power those deeds. Blessed are you, the one in whose hands all souls rest, all breath resides. I invite you to settle back into your breath once again, listening in to your body, to your breath. What messages are they bringing you? What feelings are welling up from inside with each deep breath? What images flash in your mind? What information can you derive from these feelings, these images, sensations in your body?
with the next breath in through your nose. Check back in with your body. Where have you tensed up? What muscles are clenching? What parts of your body are sitting in a position that is not bringing you comfort? Check back in and allow your whole body to relax once again. Allowing any tension or stress that you're holding to dissipate. Allowing your body to fall into whatever natural position it reaches. As you relax back into your body, allowing it to simply be, I want you to breathe into your forehead, imagining the breath filling your sinuses and bringing an energy into your brain, into your forehead, focusing your attention there, the seat of discernment. you focus on that seat of discernment, I invite you to take your mind back a few hours when the sun was just beginning to rise, probably well before you woke up. Imagine that sunrise in your mind, allow yourself, your internal self to be wherever you'd like to be to watch the sunrise. Maybe in a natural environment, maybe in a childhood home. But just before the sun breaks over the horizon, as that first glow is rising, at what point is a transition from night to day. At what point is there enough light to begin calling it morning? Imagine all the gradations in between, the darkness of night into the light of day, and how at some point The shift just happens. This too can be applied to most things in life that we see as binaries, it's night, day, good, evil, happy, sad. Infinite gradations between the poles. And the miracle of our mind allowing us to discern, to reflect, to see all of the gradations, and to still discern. As you settle into the miracle of discernment, I want you to briefly open your eyes. In the same way you discerned day from night and all the gradations in between, I want you to look around your environment and see where you discern yourself beginning and ending. Is it just at the edge of the skin of your body? Or is it somewhere further out? the entire environment you exist within is controlled by you, is shaped by you, is formed by you? Do you exist 
within that environment as the force for its ordering. Is that which is you, which provides order to the space, just as core to you and your identity as the you which resides within the boundaries of your skin. And can you, with this new view of gradations between self and other, inner and outer, modify the world around you, give yourself a greater sense of freedom locating yourself within it and moving the objects in your space to provide you a sense of liberation from your space, from any kind of restriction, modifying your external space to liberate your internal space. Do you consider this in the way you relate to space? I'm gonna invite you to change your relationship with space at this moment. I'm going to invite you to slowly and carefully stand. And as you stand, to open your eyes again if you had closed them to reorient yourself in that space. How does this new vantage point provide you a greater sense of yourself in the space, and your ability and desire to shift the space? What does standing upright do to your internal sense of self, how does it change the way you sense your internal relationship to your body, and your body's external relationship to the world? And as you settle into standing position, I invite you to flex your feet very slowly and gently. And if you can, without pain, roll through your feet, feeling all the points of contact with the floor, feeling where they support your weight, where your tendency is to lean your weight, and whether you can Move it more into the center of your foot, grounding yourself, perhaps bending your knees a bit to feel that tension between the floor and your foot and the rest of your body as your feet provide the foundation for your standing position. And tune into the solidity beneath you. That force that pushes you upwards, provides the tension that allows you to stand and push against the floor, the earth that supports you. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Once more, feeling the air charge your body with energy that allows you to connect into your body. Feel that energy course through your nose into your sinuses to that point of discernment, the 
in your forehead. And then also to shower down through the rest of your body to your feet. Allow that energy to drive downwards into the earth, feeling that connection even more strongly between you and the planet, the ground that supports you. So our tradition calls us Bene Adam, children of Adam. But Adam, Adama, also means earth. Children of the earth. Once you feel connected in, grounded through your feet into the earth, you can find your way back to your seated, comfortable position. Resting your hands wherever is comfortable, allowing once again your body to relax, to drop away from all stress. Still feeling that connection down into the earth, grounding you. Once again, I invite you to move into discernment mind. If your feet are touching the ground and the ground is supporting your feet, your feet are supporting your body. Where are the gradations between us and the earth? At what point does the earth stop and do we begin? Because the earth at, earth's atmosphere provides us air Earth's surface provides us firm ground. The Earth's water makes up most of our body. Are we two, not just extensions, clothed in Earth? The soul that is returned to us each day places itself within these earth bodies and brings us our purpose and meaning to tend the earth by tending ourselves, by tending each other. Truly, there's no division between nature and human. So we're an extension too of that nature. How do we manage ourselves as an extension? How do we manage each other? How do we manage our environment? What love can we bring to that relationship between breath and earth? where our soul and body meet and become once again a binary with an infinite gradation, allowing us to discern the difference, but to also see that in those infinite gradations, that difference itself is almost illusory. Then too, as we divide between heaven and earth, between the realm beyond our ken and the realm in which we exist, there too, we find infinite gradations, noting that that which is beyond our ken is not truly separate from us but we must strive to see it in all things, that sacred realm present. 
at all times, in all places. And as a people, B'nai Israel, children of Israel, it is our mission to struggle to bring these two together at all times. And in doing so, noting that at the end, at the beginning, at all times, all is one. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kevod Mahalchuto Leolam Laed. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God. Adonai. Is one. Blessed is the sacred name within our indwelling in this world forever and ever. With another slow breath to fill up your lungs, I invite you to open your eyes once again. Bring yourself back to your room, back to your day, back to your body, hopefully bringing forward that message of your deeds for the day, even if it's not fully conscious, even if it's not something you can define, even if it's only a feeling you want to bring with you throughout your day, center that in the point of discernment within your heart. Okay, Tov. Good morning.